Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today we're finally talking about the Valve Index. Now I've been really excited about this headset and I've been looking forward to covering it in a video. I got my pre-order in really quick so I'll have one arriving at the end of June so I can share it with you guys and girls. Interestingly, I made a predictions video back in November, so if you want to go back and check out what predictions I got right and what I got wrong, I'll put a little link up here now. But in today's video, I'll be covering all the specs, including the resolution, the field of view, the stack lenses, what the mysterious slot in the middle of the headset does, the controllers, the games, and much, much more. As always, I'll put timestamps to everything in the description down below. I hope you guys and girls find this video useful, and without further ado, let's dive in. So let's quickly start by answering the question, what the heck is the Valve Index and why is it so exciting? Well, the Index marks Valve's first in-house produced virtual reality headset. Previously, Valve worked closely in collaboration with HTC to produce the Vive, but this time they're breaking away and doing it themselves to produce what they're calling a best-in-class VR experience. Now, Valve is a mysterious company. Due to its employee code of ethics, where everyone is on the same level and can work on anything they choose, its marketing strategies or lack of, and the fact that it has the biggest gaming platform on the planet and has produced stellar titles such as Half-Life and Portal. And yet, it's very, very secretive. All this combined make Valve a fascinating company to follow. So when they bring a VR headset to market, you know it's going to be interesting and shake up the competition. Now let's get into the specs of this headset and see how it sets itself apart from the crowd, starting with the optics. The Index will sport two ultra low persistence 1600 by 1440 pixels per eye LCD panels, which is the same resolution as the Vive Pro and Samsung Odyssey. It's really interesting to see the recent shift from OLED displays to LCD displays in the VR market, as we've seen this recently with both the Pimax and the Oculus Rift S. Valve state that LCDs provide 50% more subpixels than OLED, resulting in greater sharpness for the same rendering cost. In addition, the fill factor is three times better than OLED, greatly reducing screen door effect. The Index sports a wider field of view with around 130 degrees, which is 20 degrees more than the current Rift and Vive. The Pimax still provides the widest field of view in a consumer available VR headset on the market with around 170 degrees. The most interesting thing about the optics of the Index though is the refresh rates. It can provide 80, 90, 120 and an experimental 144 hertz. I can't wait to experience what 144 hertz VR looks like. I'm pretty used to the slight differences in 72, 80 and 90 hertz, but 144 hertz seems like quite the jump forward. Very exciting indeed. The other interesting thing about the optics in the index is the stacked lens design. It uses two lenses, one on top of the other, and they're actually canted out Upwards by five degrees so they don't sit level with your eyes. Again, this is the first time we've seen something like this in a consumer VR headset, which makes it very interesting indeed. You can even see the stacked lenses represented in the Index logo. The two semicircles represent the two lenses and the circle represents your eye. Now let's get into the ergonomics and design of the headset. The headset features a head strap which resembles the Vive Deluxe audio strap with a ratchet gear system to tighten it up at the back. The face and head cushions feature a mottled grey material, which is the same material found on the Knuckles controllers, which is a high quality woven antimicrobial fabric. The face gasket for the headset is also replaceable with a magnetic interface for easy cleaning and swapping out, which is an awesome touch. To ensure the best comfort for a wide range of users, the headset has a mechanical IPD adjustment slider on the bottom of the headset, providing IPD adjustment between 58 and 70 millimeters. IPD in basic terms is the spacing distance between your eyes. The headset also has a focus dial on the side to adjust how far the lenses are from your eyes to allow adjustment for the best user clarity. On the lower front of the headset, there are two front-facing cameras. Now, these aren't used for tracking. However, they do provide full-color stereo pass-through. This is a welcome feature, as this feature works really well on both the new Oculus Quest and Rift S headsets. The Index will come shipped with a 5-meter cable from the headset, with a 1-meter breakaway cable featuring DisplayPort 1.2, USB 3.0, and 12 
volts power input. The Index will feature the best in class lighthouse tracking system as we've seen previously on the Vive and Pimax headsets. Although compatible with the original base stations, you can order it with the new Steam VR 2.0 base stations developed by Valve themselves. It also seems you'll get two stands for the lighthouses included in the complete bundle if you don't want to mount them on your walls. Now the audio solution on the Index is unique in that although it looks like an on-ear headphone design, the headphones actually sit off your ears. According to Valve, no contact with your ears means cooler temperatures and improvements in comfort for prolonged gaming sessions. Valve state with this design, virtual sound sources appear to come from the environment around you, rather than from inside your head. Although you can also use your own headphones by using a 3.5mm headphone jack if you wish. I really miss the earphones on the original Oculus Rift, now I'm using the Rift S, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing how the Index Audio performs once I get my hands on it. One of the most mysterious parts of the headset's design when the original images leaked back in November was the rectangular recess at the front with a USB port tucked inside. There was a lot of speculation around this on the internet with some suggesting it could be for a leap motion or some sort of wireless module. Now we know that this cutout is referred to as the frunk, which is a nice nod to Tesla as that's what they call the front trunk on their range of electric cars. The frunk sits behind a semi-opaque front plate, which gives the headset a very futuristic look, which personally, I'm digging. As described by Valve, the frunk is an expansion port for people who like to mod and tinker with stuff. The best use cases I've seen so far are fun LED panels showing animated logos. I'm really intrigued to see what the modding community come up with to use this slot in the future. Because of all these new and exciting features, you're going to need a pretty high-end PC to run this headset. At minimum, you'll need a dual core processor and a GTX 970. However, you'll want more horsepower to get the most out of this headset. I've linked to an official system compatibility tool in the description down below if you want to see if your system is up to scratch. Now let's talk about the controllers. Now, although they're officially called the Index controllers, I think they'll always be known as the Knuckles controllers to me. The Knuckles are unique in that they're actually attached to your hands using a strap on the back. And this means that you can compare completely let go of the grip without them falling off, making hand interactions in games feel much more natural. Also, the grip features individual finger tracking technology with capacitive touch sensors, meaning that the controller can even track the proximity of each finger without them actually touching the grip itself. Very clever indeed. Along with this, they also feature a grip force sensor. So for example, in game you could hold a glass, but if you squeezed hard on the controller, it would break the glass in game. I really look forward to seeing what developers cook up using this feature in upcoming games. This next generation Knuckles controller design has sparked imitation by the likes of Pimax, whose new sword controllers look strikingly similar. It will be interesting to see how they stack up side by side when they release. Valve have opted for a similar approach to the original HTC Vive 1s by making the controllers rechargeable using a USB Type-C connection and they tout around 7 hours reported battery life. The controllers will be compatible with both Steam VR 1.0 and 2.0 base stations and can be bought separately if you own a Vive or Pimax already. Of course, we can't forget about the games, and this is where things get even more interesting and mysterious. It's been rumoured for some time that Valve is producing three in-house VR titles, and I'm really surprised we don't have more information about them, despite the headset being released for purchase. Apparently, we'll be getting at least one of these titles by the end of the year, but what it is, we still don't know yet. It's worth noting that the Index controllers will work with any VR title currently available on Steam VR, with traditional controller inputs. However, the finger tracking technology will only be available for some titles that have implemented it for the launch. Many are listed on the Index website and include some favourites such as Superhot, Space Pirate Trainer, Big Screen and Rec Room. Further to this, any games that are designed for use with the Index will also work on first generation headset controllers such as the original Rift and Vive. The two most interesting titles in my opinion which offer full Knuckles integration are Boneworks and No Man's Sky. Bone Works is being developed by Stress Level Zero, the VR developers behind Duck Season and Hover Junkers. Even if Valve don't grace us with a full Half-Life VR game, Boneworks looks like it's shaping up to be the next best thing. It has some amazing physics interactions, it has crowbars and mechanical headcrabs, so what more could you want? My hype levels are through the roof for this title. And then we have No Man's Sky. With years in development, Hello Games have stated that in the Beyond update coming this summer, the game will finally be getting VR support and now we can live out our childhood dreams of having the freedom to explore unknown planets, pilot spaceships and shape our own 
space adventures. And finally, now let's talk about pricing and pre-orders. I originally estimated a complete bundle would cost between 600 and 800 US dollars, so I was surprised when I saw the bundle hit at almost a thousand dollars US. I was quick off the mark though, and on the 1st of May when pre-orders went live, I got in quick for a complete bundle, which should be arriving around the 28th of June. Now despite the high price tag, the index pretty much sold out within the same day, and now you can only reserve a headset for shipment around the 31st of August. However, if you already own a Vive, Vive Pro or Pimax, you can simply buy the components that you want from the index range a la carte. For example, the new Knuckles controllers will be compatible with any Steam VR headset that supports lighthouse tracking. I also pre-ordered an index virtual link adapter, which will convert the DisplayPort and USB to a single virtual link connection, which is a feature of the new Nvidia 20 series graphics cards, but will be coming to more graphics cards in the future. I'm also hoping that this adapter will work with the Rift S, as that also uses DisplayPort and USB 3.0. It's really interesting to see two big players go in complete opposite directions in the VR marketplace. You have Oculus with the Rift S focusing on mainstream adoption with ease of use at the forefront of their design and Valve pushing the boundaries in specs and targeting the enthusiast market. What an exciting time for VR enthusiasts and the VR industry. Okay, so there we have it guys and girls. That's all the information we know so far about the Valve Index. Now I am really excited about this headset, particularly about the controllers. I think they just look awesome. And with the individual finger tracking technology, it's gonna make games that support it really feel next level. And this could mark the first second generation VR headset on the market due to all these new and exciting features. Like I said at the beginning, I've got a full bundle pre-ordered to cover on the channel, which should be arriving around the end of June. So stick around and subscribe if you want to know more about this exciting headset in the future. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Did you pre-order an index? What do you think of the prices? Is this going to be your first VR headset or are you upgrading from an original Rift or Vive? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like the video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.